And now we continue with the soil fauna, which is another important group in the soil, having a soil as a habitat for other groups of organisms, not necessarily in the micro scale. And so we're going to learn more about soil fauna and how they can inter, uh, uh, correlate and react with the microorganisms. First, we have to know that uh, fauna is characterized as being eukaryotes. They, are eukary they have eukaryotic cells. They're usually aerobes, uh, with some exception of some nematodes and protozoa. They are heterotrophic, means that they don't synthesize their own food. They rely on organic carbon from the surrounding, and they are able to move from one place to another, so they have means of motility. If we look at the abundance in the soil, we could note that uh, bacteria here that's dominant in terms of number, but microfauna, for example, like protozoa, is also a dominant but less in number than uh, bacteria. We have the mesofauna. Mesofauna uh, form like the nematodes, the springtails, and the mites. They're also within reasonable numbers within the soil, but less abundant than bacteria. And with the macrofauna, note that with worms, earthworms, and other invertebrates, their numbers somehow decrease as their size become larger. So as the organisms become larger, their numbers, their abundance uh, is lowered in the soil environment. Their functional groups, we're going to talk about uh, seven or eight groups in the soil. We're going to start with protozoa. Uh, as we said, they're usually eukary they're eukaryotes, they're unicellular, and they, have, uh, they lack true cell wall. Most of their feeding is through phagocytosis. They feed phagotrophically. And they can form cysts where they could stay dormant, in dormant states most throughout the year as their growth conditions are not favorable. These cysts, they can resist drying and noxious agents. Examples like Giardia and Cryptosporidium, which has an impact on a human and animals as that they can cause uh, uh, um, illnesses in the gastric system and they can cause diarrhea and other uh, digestive problems if been ingested with food or water um, uh, in, by one way or another. So there can also be then the soil environment. Well, uh, and the other uh, protozoa like the flagellates, they could be in the soil. They could have one or four flagella, their size between 5 and 20 micrometer. Uh, others, like the naked amoeba, they don't have, they feed on bacteria, yeast, they, die, they eat yeast, they eat protozoa, they eat fungi, okay, they eat algae, and they're feeding the amoeba, they feed phagotrophically, and they don't have cell walls, so they don't have a rigid structure. The other form of the protozoa is, are the ciliates. The ciliates, they are known for having short numerous cilia that aids them to um, become mobile through vibration. And those ciliates, they often feed on bacteria and yeast. So they, that's how they lower the microbial population of bacteria. The second group other than the protozoa for fauna is the nematodes. The, the nematodes known as the round worms, they make round circles. Uh, they're usually predators on plants and microbes. Depending on their feeding, if they uh, if they eat uh, they eat microorganisms, we call them microbivores. If they eat fungi, we call them fungivores. Bacteria, if they eat bacteria, they're called bacterivores. And if they eat plants, we call them herbivores. It depends on their feeding, uh, 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 you know, uh, factors. Uh, others like mites, which are mostly predators, springtails, they're omnivores, they're responsible for decaying plant material, and they can prey on bacteria, fungi, and other nematodes. Enricotriates, or the potworms, they're small pigmented worms. They don't make burrows, they don't make little holes in the soil. They're usually predators on bacteria, fungi but they are sensitive to dryness. At the dry conditions, their number is greatly decreased. They prefer soils with high organic matter. Acidic soil are also preferable. 
They're common in moist forest litter and peat soil. The uh, other type is the earthworms. The earthworm has a scientific name, which you should know is the Lumbricus terrestris. They're usually uh, anisic, uh, they're saprophytic, they make burrows, they come to the surface in the dark, they try to evade uh, sunlight exposure, and somehow they prefer uh, uh, slightly acidic to neutral uh, soil pH range. The other worm is the Lambricus rodellus, which is the red, known as the red or blood worm. Uh, they have small to medium size. They don't make burrows. They can ingest little or no soil during the um, movement. The diplocardia, they found in the subsoil, high in organic matter, which is also known in prairie soil with high grasslands. Mollusks are part of fauna. Uh, they include like snails and slugs. They're usually uh, surface feeders. They're omnivorous. They are sensitive to microenvironmental changes. So they could be indicators of environmental quality in the area. If they're there, that means the uh, environment is clean. If they are absent, it indicates some environmental pollution and problem. Uh, what is known for snails and slug is that they secrete mucoproteins to lubricate the passages and, and that's also helpful in uh, aggregating the soil particles together. As for another group of fauna, they are the ants and termites. They are saprophytic, some are predators on fungi. They usually, some of them, they feed on wood tissue. They have the ability to degrade cellulose. And that's how uh, their gut, uh, the gut of the ants and termites, is uh, a host for uh, other uh, uh, cellulose uh, degrading microbes. The microflora in their gut produce cellulases that enables them to digest cellulose. Uh, large arthropods are also present fauna in the soil like millipedes, centipedes, and they're usually surface feeders. Some, they make burrows in the soil. Uh, so most of the environmental factors that affect their presence of fauna in the soil is water, uh, moist active in moist soil, they require oxygen, they're aerobes. They pour in excessively wet soil. If the soil is submerged or saturated, the fauna is uh, uh, greatly reduced. And they're also sensitive to drought. Well, little moisture is also not good for them. Uh, pH range is uh, um, often they prefer near alk neutral conditions. So if it's very highly acidic, the diversity will uh, be reduced. Light is also uh, crucial because uh, most of the fauna, they try to evade light since they are sensitive to light. That's why many of them, they make burrows to evade ex light exposure. Uh, temperature, they're usually also in the mesophilic range. Uh, to escape heat, earthworms, for example, they make burrowing. The soil structure, the more compact soil, that could inhibit their activity in the soil. Addition of certain chemicals like herbicides, pesticides, and other fertilizers could affect their presence in the soil. That's why they could sometimes be indicators of environmental quality. If their pollution is there, their numbers will be greatly reduced. The direct effect of fauna on the soil is that they're helpful in nutrient cycling. They can do something called communition, is that they cut, uh, for example, plant leaves into smaller sizes that could enhance the surface area for other microorganisms to take place and start degradation. They could uh, have a direct effect on grazing, grazing on other microbes, and could have an effect on nutrient availability. Let's here uh, see an experiment with uh, uh, demonstrating communition played by uh, soil fauna and the nematodes, for example. Like if we got two bags, two bags, they contain the soil, the same uh, material, 
uh, of organic material and with this organic material we have the only difference is in the bish size this bag has larger size pores but this bag for example has smaller size pores okay the seven millimeter mesh bag and the one millimeter mesh bag they contain the same amount of organic matter and if this mesh bag is laid on the surface of the soil and been monitored to how much organic matter is there we can also monitor how much organic matter is disappearing for each month they come each month and you weigh those two bags well the after the end of the experiment we could note these two graphs the solid line graph and the dashed line graph the solid line uh, solid line uh, graph here represents the seven millimeter mesh bag while the one millimeter mesh bag uh, has lower percentage of disappearance than the seven millimeter mesh bag this indicates that as the pores mesh bags here became larger it allows soil fauna to get inside this bag and to do communition to cut down the size of the plant leaves into smaller sizes and then comes the role of fungi and bacteria in degrading the uh, organic leaves and so the disappearance is higher in in higher mesh bag which uh, implies the role of fauna as well as the bacteria and the fungi here if we want to study another study to emphasize the role of fauna on plant biomass this is the plant shoot biomass study where they have uh, uh, tested the plant shoot biomass with days at different treatments of bacteria plus nematodes represented by this line bacteria and nematodes this has only bacteria in the soil and this is the control where bacteria is sterile with no bac no bacteria no uh, uh, nematodes you see with the solid line with the control there's a slight increase in the shoot biomass but this increase in shoot biomass is enhanced where the addition of bacteria could uh, play a role in um, nutrient cycling to, uh, and therefore it provides more nutrients to the plant but with nematodes the uh, graph is even larger where we could also find an, a beneficial role of nematodes to the uh, plant ecosystem as well and so the plant is healthier and could acquire better nutrients this uh, study here this is figure represents a study done to uh, see the effect of nematodes on um, for example the release of co2 from the organic matter with fungi like if you have if you added cellulose to soil and you know that the role of fungus is to degrade cellulose if you add nematodes that feed on fungi the nematodes they feed on fungi okay they eat fungi and therefore they can reduce the propagules of fungi and then you could note a less co2 less degradation of cellulose okay in the soil where if you don't have nematodes the fungus could continue in enhancing the uh, uh, degradation of cellulose and, and therefore the amount of co2 released after the degradation will also be enhanced so we saw that the role of soil fauna could be direct effect where microbial community composition and activity by regulating the microbial populations for example here with bacteria this is the population versus time if we have the solid line here number of bacteria keeps in increasing until it reaches the maximum number where we could also note that there's another increase on the number of protozoa that feed on bacteria until the protozoa numbers became the highest it means they have more protozoa feeding on bacteria and that has a negative impact on the mark of bacterial population so the bacterial population start to decrease after decreasing the microbial bacterial population that's followed by a decrease in the protozoal population 
as protozoa population start to decrease, we could see also effect where bacterial population. And therefore, I want you to know that there's a dynamic relationship between uh, uh, the microbial population and the uh, fauna population. And that's how they regulate the microbial population. The indirect effect of fauna comes from their ability to do tunneling and therefore ability to infiltrate uh, water, ability to aggregate soil particles, and to mix the soil, uh, uh, do soil mixing like a biological plowing. Okay, and that these are the indirect effect of, uh, uh, of fauna in the soil. And this is very important for even agricultural practices as well. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Bye.